Hello, hello, welcome back. It's nice to see you back here again. So today, I don't know if you can tell, but I have my trusty little laptop here. Oops. <laughs> How many of you have seen The Button? Um, for those who don't know, The Cut makes a regular weekly series called The Button, where two single contestants sit across from a table and the button asks some specific questions and then whenever the button lights up red you have the chance to hit it and reject either them or yourself but you know if you want if you're interested in the actual show you can go see the cuts channel and they have plenty of content over there but i don't want to focus on the actual game show itself what i want to focus on is the interactions that i saw in one of their videos so what I want to focus on here is actually the very first two interactions in that video, which involve Mark as the protagonist in this particular situation, Jasmine, the first antagonist, and Brittany. Now what the purpose and the goal of this video is, is to not only react to the content, but also to give good guidelines on what should be avoided, what's okay, what isn't okay, and steps that you can take in order to avoid reacting in this similar manner, as well as just overall improve your social mannerisms. Because Mark has a very, very poor social skills. He has very poor social mannerisms. He doesn't really know what exactly he's doing when he's saying stuff. He's just saying whatever comes first to his mind. He's not taking a second to think and process what he actually wants to say. And that's a very common issue with a lot of young men these days is that we tend to act too quickly or we act too awkwardly and then we just, everything falls apart from there. So the entire purpose and point of this video is just to reflect on it, give you advice and tips based on how I've experienced things. These are not cut and dry. They are not meant to be like a one size fits all thing, but they are generalized based on my experience so that's why this video is going to be a little biased towards me, for you, but I'm still hopeful that it'll help you in some way, shape, or form. So, let's go ahead and start with the very first interaction. Hello. Hi, I'm Mark. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, so the very first thing that happens is that Mark introduces himself. But the way that he introduces himself is way too quick. He goes, hi, I'm Mark, and then shakes his hand really fast, which shows that you're either nervous or shy, being quick in your responses or your introduction and giving a very high intensity shake shows that you don't have confidence in the situation, that you lack the boldness and the authenticity to be able to actually interact with somebody on a normal, like, level basis. Counteractively to Jasmine's introduction, hers is very friendly, polite. She says, hi, nice to meet you, and then very gently shakes his hand. And he's sitting there, like, actually vibrating her hand and shit, and just, you know, it, you could see it in the interaction. All right, let's start this day, you two lovers. What brings you joy? Okay, you see right there when she, when he asks, what brings you joy? You know, it's, it's fine to ask what brings you joy. When you're literally just meeting someone for the very first interaction, it's fine to ask interview questions. You know, like what brings you joy? What's your family life like? What, what's your um, work like? You know, stuff like that. You can ask beginner introductory questions like that. May not be exactly the best thing to go forward with, but at least you get it out of the way. And actually, I also want to go over her response to the question really quick. My job and my family. How about you? Her response was cutthroat and clean. Her response was just my family and my job. She didn't need to overextend on the question because there was no need to. He's clearly nervous, she can see that, so she's not going to overwhelm him with additional information that he's not going to build up on. Jasmine has very, very good social awareness, so she's answering in a very calm and gentle nature and not answering too much. That's something a lot of people tend to struggle with is that they will answer too much and then there's nothing to build conversations with. Like, for example, this interaction could have gone, my job is my passion in life because I work in engineering and engineering is something that I've wanted to do since I was a kid. And when I was a kid, I wanted to do engineering because my dad was an engineer and he showed me all these cool things that he did when he was an engineer. Okay, all of that is really cool, but 
that doesn't really help with getting to know them because now they've told you six different things about their life in the matter of 10 seconds. And how are you expected to remember all that? Plus it disengages from additional conversations. So then in this case, a proper interaction could be, what are your passions? My job and my family. Oh, okay, how do you like your job? My job is an engineer. Oh, okay, why did you wanna be an engineer? Because my dad was an engineer. Oh, did your dad like being an engineer? Yeah, he loved being an engineer. He always told me and brought home the coolest things that he would bring home from work. You know, all of that is a very, very good interaction because then you remember each individual reaction rather than having to remember the entire interaction sandwich all at once. It's much easier to process information when you take a break between each interaction, which is so key to actually memorizing things about people, being present with them, as well as just being able to get to know them a lot faster. You get to know them faster by being slower in your interactions. It's really weird how that works out. But let's go ahead and get into the way that Mark reacts. Well, definitely not my family okay. or my job. No. Why is that? My, my job is just like really depressing, like manual labor, no, no joy in that. My family, they all just hate each other. So he immediately cuts things off and drops the ball and says, I don't like my family or my job either. That is an immediate mood killer. Immediately done. That dude is immediately out of the game. As soon as he spilled those beans, it's over. If they say that they hate their job and their family when you love your job and your family, it's immediately just done. <laughs> Dunzo, gonzo, like washed clean, abolished. There's nothing to return from that. At least she was halfway decent and asked him why. But then he just drops the ball again and says, all my family hates each other and my job is just a mediocre job that doesn't do anything. Like for a first date question, these are horrible answers. Even if you think that your job is horrible, if you're working a line cook at McDonald's, you don't even, you don't have to come right out the gazoo and say, I'm a line cook at McDonald's. It's really boring. It's, it's depressing. I don't like it. The way that you can frame it is like, yeah, I'm right now. The key word here is right now. I'm working as a line cook. It's not the best, but it is getting me by until I can find my dream career. And you leave it at that. You don't say what your dream career is, even if you're making it up. Even if you're making up that you're waiting to have a dream career or you're going into the military or you're gonna to go to college or whatever your excuse is. Any reason that you have, you don't explain the reason right away. You hold off on the reason because now it's picked her interest. It's like, oh, well, wh why are you going to college? Or, you know, what, what's your dream job? Or why are you going to the military? And then that opens up the next branch, just like I discussed a couple minutes ago in the video, is that these interactions allow people to remember more about you and you about them. That's the beauty of having smaller, easily digestible conversations. Mark has some deal breakers. Okay. One is people who smell bad. Jasmine, can he give you a little whiff? Um, sure. <laughs> oh, all right. Do, do I s Like... I don't know, it smells like soap to me. Yeah, that's not, not a deal breaker. I did shower today, so... <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so let's go over this part right here. He sits down and says, Oh, you smell like soap. Whatever you do, don't say that somebody smells like soap because that is very boring. Almost everybody in the English speaking world uses a scented soap or perfume or cologne or what have you. They have something scented. So if you do have a very poor sense of smell, you could just say, yeah, she smells really nice. You don't even have to be descriptive. Don't say that you smell like soap. That, that's, that's, that's just not it, fam. That's, that's, not, that's not it, okay? <laughs> So this interaction right here kills me. It just tickles me so much. When she says, yeah, I did take a shower today. And he responds, thank you. <laughs> That's very similar energy to when you're shopping and then the cashier says, have a great rest of your day. And you say, you're welcome. 
Like that's that that's that same energy right there. So don't say thank you to someone showering, obviously, but oh yeah, actually no. You can ask like, do you have a specific brand of body wash that you use? What kind of soap do you use? You know, stuff like that. I mean, it's still a little weird, but at least you can get kind of like a vibe on their like brand preference or their scent preference or something like that. So you can get a good scent profile on them. And then that even opens the gate to where if you go on a second or third date with them, you can buy them more of their shampoo or conditioner or soap or body wash or perfume or whatever it is, right? So it opens the gate to be able to actually buy gifts in the future. Honestly, when I think about it, it's, it's not that bad, but it's still a little awkward to ask about personal care products. So... I would, in general, just avoid answering anything in that scenario, and we'll just move on to the next section. What are your thoughts on God? Do you believe in God? There is most likely no higher power, or at least if there is, whatever higher power there is, they probably don't care about us too much. Okay, so this one is super, super personal. She's religious and believes in God. And he responds... I don't really believe in religion or any higher power, but if there is a higher power, he probably doesn't care about us all that much. I can't tell you how much I internally cringed. Like that, that was the worst response that you could have given. You wanna know what response you could give instead if she asked you, how do you feel about religion? I feel good. Or you can just simply answer, I'm not religious. But to take it the extra mile and say, oh, I don't know if I'm religious or not, but if there is a higher power, he doesn't care about us. To tell the person that's religious that their deity doesn't care about them is a whole extra level of just so fucked up. <laughs> it, it, it's baffling. It, it's... I don't really have anything to say on that. Don't, just don't. Marco has never kissed a woman or held a woman's hand. Oh, you're really helping me out here, Bun, aren't you? <laughs> if Jasmine consents, would you? I could hold your hand. Yeah, I I'm okay with that. Okay, like one hand, do you want both hands? Yeah, I think one, one hand's more intimate. Just one hand, yeah. okay. Why haven't you held a woman's hand before? I I'm just awful with women, man. Uh -huh. like, holding her hand. Like, 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 like this. Okay, that, that's really awkward. You see, like, you see how they're holding hands. It's like an awkward handshake. That is never how you should be holding a woman's hand. You should be holding a woman's hand by like this, offering your palms downside. This shows that you are offering something and gives her the opportunity to accept if she wishes. Even Jasmine, when she was offering her hands, you saw that she was naturally wanting to lift her hands up like this and going like this. Do you want one hand or both hands? You know, which hand do you want? She was offering them up top, which means that when you offer, you offer down low. And honestly, for whatever reason, like, it might be societal, it might be genetic, but for some reason, men almost always like hold hands on the bottom and then the woman almost always hold hands on the top. I don't know if it's like because this looks more masculine and this looks more feminine. I truly don't know, but I'd love to go deeper and dive on that in a future video, honestly. All right, Jasmine has rejected herself. Not just the religion thing, but also like the family thing and the job thing. I'm a really big family person. I'm very family oriented. So if I were to have children with someone, it would be really meaningful to me if they got to meet, you know, both sides of the family. Fair enough. Yeah, but I hope you find someone that's really great and will also hold your hand. <laughs> okay, so now let's discuss the reasons that Jasmine gave to reject herself from Mark, which are very good. I love my family. I love my job and I love my religion. You know, we're just not compatible. And she gave very, very like, not, not selfish reasons, but just like, if they did create a family together, she would want the families to intermingle and all go to church together and have a bigger family together and just be more successful together. Because honestly, success is a social thing. You need to be social to be successful most of the time, right? So her reasons are very valid. And overall, she's a very pleasant person. Like if I was single, I would absolutely be like, the religion would be a little iffy on me. Like I'm open to being religious. I'm like, I'm not atheist. I'm not anti-Semitic or anything. 
but I am open to being more religious should the opportunity come. So for me, with her, it would definitely be a second date for me. I don't know how she'd feel about me, but I, I think I would have a pretty good shot if I was single. Anyways, let's move on to the second antagonist, which is Brittany. Now this one's gonna be much shorter because the interaction between them was a lot less, there was a lot less to go into, so. Hey, how are you? I'm Mark, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, my name is Brittany. Real quick, how old are you? Do I look old? I am 31. Oh, I'm 24. Yeah, just notice a little bit of an age gap, I'm sorry. Oh, you don't look elderly, okay. you're good. Immediately off rip, like pulling the lawnmower cord off the rip, starting up the lawnmower right away. Vroom, he asks, how old are you? <laughs> Obviously, it's socially expected that you don't ask a woman her age. But even then, you don't have to ask her her age because you can take one look at her and she looks on the older side. Now, granted, she's only 31 and I personally thought that she was in her 40s. That could just be because she, you know, that's just how she looks. Could be for health reasons, could be genetics. We don't know, but you still don't want to ask her her age. And then the butter or the, the cream on the top. You don't look elderly. Like, you don't look like somebody that's about to retire. So that's good. And, like, her face even says it all. Her face is just trying not to be offended. But you know that she's absolutely pissed at this interaction. Like, it's already done. It's, it's already over. Just go home. Do not pass go. Do not collect $100. Straight to the big house. Donezo. Have you had any serious relationships? Not at all, no. No? Okay. Okay, so he admits that he doesn't have any relationship experience, which by itself is fine. You don't have to have relationship experience to still be interesting to people. Like, I know society at large says you need to lose your virginity like that right away. Don't do that. You need to find a girlfriend right away. Don't do that. You know, it's this pressure to be like everybody else's degenerate lifestyle is very, very large. And our natural biology wants us to be able to be fitting in with these other people and wants us to mate and reproduce with somebody. But don't lose your virginity to someone that doesn't care, that's in a degenerate lifestyle, or you meet at a drunk party or a drug party, or even worse, you pay. Oh my. Goodness, don't ever pay for that. Uh, interesting. So what is your type? You know, I, I don't have like very much experience to like really have a, a type to mm. go after specifically. Okay, what's your type? I don't have a type. Game over. You always have a type. Don't kid yourself like he kidded himself. Don't joke around with yourself. You have a type. You have a type. Don't joke around. You have a type. I had a type. It was Asian woman. Okay? So I went out and I saw an Asian woman. And I got an Asian woman. We all have types. And if we want to be truly masculine as men, we need to be aware of these desires, these urges, these, you know, types that we have. Where, regardless of wherever you get it from, if you get it from like walking down the street and you happen to see an Asian, you think, oh my gosh, she looks beautiful. You know, it could be from anything. It could be a redhead. It could be an African-American. It could be a Middle Eastern. It could be a Muslim. It could be literally anyone. It could be an Alaskan, okay? Literally anyone, you have a type. And when you do find that type, you should do everything in your power to make yourself available to that type. That's my philosophy anyways. That's what I did. How do you think you would be as a partner? Oh God. He doesn't even answer why he would be a good boyfriend. He can't even answer that. If at that point you are so down low that you can't even answer why you would be a good boyfriend, you really, really need two or three different hobbies, okay? You need to find one, two, three different hobbies that aren't just video games or hanging out with friends or smoking or drinking. You know, none of these negative habits. Hanging out with friends is fine, but that's not really a hobby because that doesn't define your, your lifestyle, the way that you live, the way that you, you know, how healthy you are. So my three hobbies are um, 
keeping aquariums, going out fishing, and going to the gym literally every single day. Okay, those are just my three main hobbies I can think of off the top of my head. I have like maybe five or six hobbies total, but those are just the three that come right off, like, like off rip that shows how I am as a person, right? So when you say that you don't have any hobbies or you don't know how you would be as a partner because you're not engaging, you're not funny, you're not witty, you're not interactive, you're not bold, you're not ambitious, you're not generous, you're not any of this stuff, okay? There's nothing to say, but just like, even saying something would be better than nothing in this case, just something. The rest of the video of Brittany doesn't really go into much at all. They just kind of talk about how they're not compatible. But overall, what I really wanted to get out of this is that being Mark sucks. When you have no experience and you're not confident and you're not able to interact properly with people, it really, really sucks. And I really feel bad about the way that he exits too because he is genuinely quite like up like not upset, but he looks very, very anxious to get out of there. Oh, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. You have rejected yourself. Yes. Would you explain why? That doesn't feel right. I agree. I just want to get out of here. Yeah, bye. All right, good luck. Good job, my babe. Yo, the button kept bringing up very personal information. It's okay that the button was trying to get him out of the comfort zone, fine, but he was so anxious by the end of just two interactions of females because he kept messing up and he knew he was messing up and then it kept building and building and building in his head that by the end of it, the anxiety just got the better of him and he had to get out of there. So he rejected himself as soon as he could and then he says, ah, I'm just not comfy. I want to get out of here now, please. There is no easy, single, fast track fix to going about making yourself a better man for future women that you meet, okay? A lot of these red pill gurus or blue pill gurus or, you know, whoever you follow are going to tell you that this is the way, this is the way, this is the way, follow me and pay for my course. Quite personally, I'm not about that. I'm, I think I'm kind of like a mix between the red and the blue pill to combine into like a purple pill. If you're also interested in more content from me personally, please subscribe to my channel. I'm new around here. Until next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day, man. Take care.